How you all doing guys? Brandon here from Retro Dodo. Welcome back to yet another episode of What The Fake, the YouTube series where we go around the web to find the fakest games consoles possible. And in this episode, we have found an 18 pound fake Nintendo Switch. Now China are pumping these things out. I don't know who's buying them, stupid YouTubers like me probably, but I don't know if they're firing these out so much because people are buying them, perhaps parents are buying them, or children want a more affordable, cheaper handheld to play old school games. But I have yet to open this up. I don't know how it performs, but I know kind of how it looks. Now I have no idea what you call this. Video games, video games, video games. Perhaps it's even called video games. Who knows what this is called? I don't know who made this, but let's just jump right into it and see what this handheld has to offer. And for those of you that are not subscribed, please do because a high percentage of you are not. And I'd like you to join the community because we have a ton of these fake consoles coming out in the near future. In the box, you get those cheap earphones that make your earlobes bleed and a micro USB. So they still haven't got USB-C on this thing, which is unfortunate. So let's put that to the side. Bye bye, and let's take a look at the handheld itself. And you can tell it's definitely gone for those switch colors with the light blue and the red here. You've got an analog stick which sits quite flush with the console, which is quite nice. You've got your rainbow buttons, your rainbow D pad, you've even got the plus and minus buttons up here. So they have taken a few design aspects from the Nintendo Switch. Yoku, Yokai, Yo, however you say that, perhaps that's the company behind it. You've got some grips on the back. You've got a, I uh, have no idea what that is. That's not even a button. Your speaker grill, more grips on the top, your on button, your SD card slot, micro USB, headphone jack, mini HDMI out if you want to plug this into your TV. And that looks like a back button. And you've got your shoulder buttons up there, which look a bit weird. They're almost like embossed into the handheld. So let's turn this on and see what it has to offer. It has a five inch screen, which is quite nice. That took a while to turn on there, but I can already tell the viewing angles, not so good. All right, so I've put the SD card in already. We've got, this almost looks like the old PlayStation menu. Games, video, music, photo, ebook, dictionary, stopwatch, browser, if you want a stopwatch. You know, you, ne you never know. Let's just jump right into games. I want to see how this performs and what it can play. In terms of like comfortability, it's actually not too bad. And the screen looks all right as well, even though the viewing angles are a bit off. Okay, so we go into our SD card and we can see what it can find. So it can find, it can see Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, MAME, Mega Drive, NES, it can even see PlayStation 1 ROMs, which is worrying. It definitely won't be able to play that. And Super Famicom. So let's take a look at Game Boy Color for now and see if it can like load one of these. I don't know which one to... I'd like to jump into Pokemon, but that's not a very uh, good game to jump into just to test out. Shall we go with Toy Story 2? Let's try Toy Story 2 on the Game Boy Color. Okay, so the audio is as good as you're going to get from an 18 pound handheld. Let's jump right in. Start. Woody has fallen out the window. Race to save him. The screen's quite good. You can see, like, the colors are good. It's quite sharp. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, no. So, so far, so good. And I'm guessing to come out, you press one of these, or maybe the back button. There you go. And if you want to save game, you can with these typical Chinese handhelds. You press save game, you press progress one, and it's saved. And when you load up your ROM, you can go into load progress and load it up. And if you want to go stretched, I'm guessing you can, you can go screen size and you can go full screen if you want and that should um, get you into your full screen stretch look 
if you're into that. But the colors are quite good. If you can see that, like, look at that. Colors are bright. All right, let's come out of that and try Game Boy Advance because Game Boy Advance is probably going to be the most stressful thing on here, apart from Mega Drive. All right. So I've got a few on here. These are mostly my Japanese games. Should we try Super Mario World 2? It might be Japanese, so apologies. Oh, no, it's our English one. Here we go! Oh, that was so good, yet I did it wrong. Oh, that's how you do it. Got a straggler. Eesh! Frame rate wise, it's okay. It's not super fluid. There's definitely some uh, jiggling. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Like, it's playing this quite... Oh, no. Alright, I'm impressed with that. And it really does look good on this screen. Look at that. Impressive. Alright. Audio-wise as well, that was almost near perfect. Should we try Mega Drive? So it's got MAME. I'm not sure if it can play Mega Drive, but it's worth uh, giving it a go. What's a good one? I've got so many Mega Drive games on here. Sonic 3D Big Bang, should we give that a go? Like that will push it to the limit if it can play it. I don't know if it can. Oh no, it is loading. All right. Oh no. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh. Oh no. This is actually disgusting. This is really struggling with this 3D Mega Drive game. Oh no, that's not good at all, is it? Oh, I can't even see what the hell I'm doing. All right, we'll we'll pass on that one. It cannot do Mega Drive, which is a bit disappointing, really. We could go on to like a, a smaller. Mega Drive game and see how it uh, deals with that. Oh no, I can hear the audio. Oh, look at that. Oh no. That's really disappointing actually. So, that goes to show that Mega Drive is a no-go on here. But Game Boy Games looks like it's running fine. Should we try some NES? Let's try some NES. Contra 2. Actually, let's try original Contra. Everyone loves Contra. You should be able to do this quite well. Now, comfortability-wise, it's actually quite nice to hold, especially for like an adult with quite large hands. This is comfortable. Shoulder buttons are in the right place. Analog sticks in the right place. Yes. No. The analog stick got stuck then. So there you go, Contra is running fine, so NES is 100% working. Now, I do have a PlayStation 1 ROM on here. It will not play that. Yeah, it can't even read them. That's a bit unfortunate. So there's a quick look at this fake Nintendo Switch outside of China. I don't advise picking it up, but if you're looking for a very cheap way to play your Game Boy uh, and your NES and SNES games, then this would possibly be a cheaper way to go if you're looking to buy it for a kid or as a gag gift to a friend who's into their Nintendo Switch. But I'm kind of impressed 
by the screen. The viewing angles are incredibly poor, but when you're looking at it straight on, the pixel density is like near perfect. It's a great little screen actually, and it's very large. So there you have it, a quick look at this fake Nintendo Switch. Don't advise picking this one up at all, but uh, you never know. Some of you out there might find it for like 15, 20 bucks, then it might be good for those Game Boy Color games or Game Boy Advance games on the go. As per usual, thank you for watching this episode of What The Fake. Please do hit that subscribe button for more content, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.